It's Friday, September 26th. Here's what we're looking at. An extremely complicated tropical setup over the coming days that could bring devastating impacts to parts of the southeast. Rain today, that's really just going to start to prime the pump and cause problems across parts of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia if we indeed look at a tropical cyclone making landfall as we head into next week. A few showers into the northeast, but otherwise we're starting to dry out some here. Severe weather possible across parts of the southwest, especially as we head into the afternoon and evening across Arizona. And our next system is taking aim at the west coast as we head into Sunday, Monday, into Tuesday. It could bring some snow, too, into parts of British Columbia. We're going to take a look at the entire country today, but we're going to focus on what's happening across the southeast U.S. because this could be a really impactful storm with a lot of rain. And I think flooding rains, that is a, going to be a huge problem. Now, here's the deal. No one knows where this thing's going. Okay, I, I want to just put that out there because if you look at all the operational runs, they're all over the place. We're going to look at some of the steering currents in just a moment. But t take a look at this. This is the European overnight run. How, how complicated could that possibly be? Look at what's happening here. There's so many things going on. If this thing forms into Amilda, now you're going to see this thing being pulled north and west because of an upper trough that's going to be weakening as we move through the weekend into the first part of next week. And then will Umberto ultimately tug this thing a little bit further toward the coast. In other words, not let it really move ashore. And then look, pull it back ashore. This is a very complicated setup. National Hurricane Center clearly watching this region for development over the next couple of days. As it moves into the Bahamas, now a 90% chance of developing into some sort of tropical cyclone. This is what I like to look at. We're going to continue to watch these uh, ensemble plots. This is all of the different positions for these two storms. There's starting to be some consensus here as this approaches the southeast. At least it's getting a little bit more narrow now. How far inland does it go? Because those inland impacts, I think, could be some of the most overlooked things uh, that we're going to be watching with this storm. This is a bit of a different look across the country. We do have a trough that's swinging into the west. That's going to bring our next storm as we head into the first part of next week. Here's what we're looking at right now. We've got this upper low that's going to be across the Tennessee Valley. Out ahead of this, a lot of rain will be falling across parts of Virginia, down into the Carolinas as we head through the weekend. Otherwise, this trough will slam into the west. It's going to bring some rain here, and there's that upper low spinning across the southwest. That's going to keep the showers around, I think, at least through the first part of next week. A big ridge across the central U.S. up towards the Great Lakes, keeping things warm, above average, also relatively dry. Uh, and this is also a pretty big storm for parts of Alaska and into British Columbia, too, with a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and some high mountain snow. Now, this is where things get really complicated as we head into the first part of next week. This upper low that's going to try to suck this tropical cyclone back to the northwest, look how it's starting to fill in and weaken. So that tugging is not going to be as strong. We're also, we've also got a decent area of upper level high pressure back off to the east of all of this, driving Umberto further to the west. And I think that's been kind of the trend is to pull things a little bit further to the west. At this point, do these storms start to interact? I'm just telling you right now, this is one operational run of the European overnight. It tries to take Umberto and tug it back to the east and then release it and keep it right at the coast and then push, let it go. And, and then it moves inland. At this point, I would just say, watch this storm. If you are anywhere in the southeast or even the mid-Atlantic, because Wherever this thing goes, hopefully it doesn't do this and move inland because now we're looking at a slow moving, heavy rainmaker that could cause catastrophic inland flooding. We don't have a storm yet either. That's another thing too, right? So this piece of energy is going to start to move into a more favorable environment over the coming days across the Bahamas, which we'll see some impacts and Umberto still way out here continuing to again move back to the west and northwest around this area of high pressure. Otherwise, Boy, I'm telling you guys what, last year, right before Helene hit, we were just looking at this axis of moisture just giving us this precursor rain. I hope that's not what we're seeing. This kind of looks like that too with the rain falling across parts of North Carolina, South Carolina, down into Georgia, even Virginia getting the rain. We're going to go around the country now and look at the precipitation over the coming days. We're going to start clearly here in the southeast where we're watching this Big storms start to wrap up over the next couple of days. A lot of rain on the way today across Georgia, the panhandle of Florida. As we get into the afternoon, some of these storms start to pulse up, and we're going to see some downpours across parts of South Carolina, especially the coastal plain, into the Piedmont of North Carolina, up into Virginia, too. This slug of moisture is moving north. 
along our front, some lighter showers back across the central Appalachians. Your heaviest rain will likely be here across eastern Virginia, North Carolina, also into South Carolina. Again, areas that are going to start to feel those impacts likely early next week as our tropical cyclone moves out of the Bahamas and north towards the coast. A lot of convergence still happening here along the coast, so more heavy rain as we head into Sunday. None of this is associated with our potential hurricane just yet, a lot of it being driven by our stall, a stalled front, also that upper level low that's back to the west. Once we move into Monday, these short range models are starting to pick up on where the storm would be and it's moving through the Bahamas and strengthening as it does so. It also is probably going to have a bit of a mid-latitude cyclone or mid-latitude low look to it with a lot of heavy rain moving off to the north and west of it as it approaches the coast. But I tell you, this is an interesting look on the RRFS output last night. That is starting to look like a strong tropical cyclone approaching the southeast. Into the northeast, rain moving away, at least the heavy showers, a few afternoon showers possible across upstate New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, the Green and White Mountains into Maine. These will be scattered. Heavier rain to the south, lifting north now out of Virginia into West Virginia. Also into parts of Maryland, we'll see the rain pick up as we head now into Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening into Delaware, parts of New Jersey, and then up toward New York City, Long Island. The rain chances going up as we head into Sunday also into Monday, we'll keep a few showers around, but most of this starts to kick to the east, and we do see some drying across this part of the country heading into the first part of the week. Here's a look at your temperatures today. Uh, a little bit cooler, especially across the deep south, where that heat has just held on for the last several days. Big differences on the way, and here's a look at your temperatures heading into Saturday. Warmer here now across parts of the Midwest, the upper Midwest, back up into the 80s for parts of Illinois, even Indiana, getting pretty toasty. Severe weather today possible, mostly across Arizona. Otherwise, just a few scattered showers. Some of them could pulse up into the parts of the southeast, but not a huge severe weather event today. But you got to watch parts of Arizona as we head into the afternoon and evening today. Some of these could contain some gusty winds, some strong downdrafts with these storms, and some big downpours as well. And I think flash flooding is going to be a threat here over the next couple of days. Heading into Saturday, we've got this system moving into parts of, or really Saturday into Sunday. Our next system starts to plow into the Pacific Northwest. We're gonna keep the showers around the Intermountain West through Sunday. In fact, they're going to expand, but this next storm looks like it's gonna bring a lot of rain and wind into the Pacific Northwest. And some of that could start to drop into parts of California with some high mountain snow into the Sierras. And look, another storm behind this may impact this region heading into Tuesday. And here's a look at your temperatures across the West. Let's move along quickly. We'll head towards the central states right now. We've talked about those storms that will be going today across parts of Arizona uh, and into New Mexico too, I think, and up into Utah, but otherwise relatively dry across the central states from the Southern Plains all the way to the Canadian border. Those showers move a little bit further to the east as we head into Saturday. So rain chances increasing, I think, across parts of New Mexico. And it could be cold enough for some really high elevation snow here into parts of Colorado. But otherwise, as we head through the weekend, relatively dry at least across the central states a few showers trying to work back into the deep south from the east due to that upper low and also we're starting to feel maybe some of that tropical moisture moving back to the west here's a look at your temperatures as we head into this afternoon warmer across the southern plains also the northern plains temperatures back up into the 70s and 80s saturday very similar a little bit warmer across texas though with highs warming back up into the 80s even some 90s trying to show up across oklahoma and texas here we are in late September, so very warm for this time of year and really warm for this time of year up across parts of Montana, North Dakota, even South Dakota, up into the 80s, close to 90 maybe into parts of eastern Montana. So really warm here also into parts of Wyoming.